Feature Friday. The freshest. <laughs> Oh, no, this is so fun. It's not interesting. This is uh, uh, one this is that... This bound to be fantastic. <laughs> that I've been, been looking forward to since it released, which was like, I don't know, a day ago or two days yeah, ago. Yeah, a and few days back. It's yeah. so hard to get the notification and not click on it. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's one of the hardest videos yes. from like, one of the hardest... What I did though is I clicked, press like, went out. <laughs> press like, don't watch. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I really like these guys. They're, they're, they're impressive, man. They're so bloody talented. This and, is so crazy. Yeah. And, and I, I think... It's just also their activity and, and, and work ethic that's impressive to me. And how proactive they are in their, in their yeah, there in was the whole music there world. Yeah. Doing stuff. In case we don't, you don't know what we're talking about, Bugoy and Daryl. <laughs> how cool! Yeah. Let's go! We're together again. Oh my god, fun! <laughs> Ooh, look at them, they're already vibing! The recorded is a while back, though, I think. Yeah, this is the same day that he recorded Impossible Love. This is so cool. Wish. 107.5. His hair is perfect. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> Haven't we heard this song before? I feel like I have heard this song before. I don't care, I'm watching it again. Not this version though, I can assure you that. Woo! And it's rainy and it's such an atmospheric Lights. vibe. I love the arrangement, the rhythmical arrangement that has uh, the track going on. Less is more, man. Sick. It really lets them sit in the track and shine. Boss, uh, if anyone uh, could, uh, or maybe I shouldn't actually know anyone, I'll do it myself. <laughs> I want to know the lyrics. Uh, so this is Kong May. My Baba. Oh, it's by Regine Velasquez. Cool. I think I've seen it. So we, well, I think, we I think probably... I've seen the original. Yeah. No, they sang it. Buda Kel sang it. In oh, a... they did a studio version. Yes, yes they it sang was... it before. With Kel and I as think well. we watched it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I like. I feel like I've already seen it. I think it's on the channel as well. Yeah, it's yeah. true. So that's why this song sounds so familiar. Let me hear the lyric, and I'm pretty sure I did the same thing. <laughs> I think you did. Translate oh, actually, to actually. Got it, I got it, mate. No, 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 it's here. Oh, no, it's auto generated. Oh, dang it. I got it here. All right. Uh, so it goes, What a waste of moments that I spent. You are already there. Why look for others? This is, again, this is like translation. So some words might get lost in translation, some meaning of it. Now you are dreaming. I regret everything. Why is repentance always late? The past Ooh. is re irreversible. Did it's Regine write this? Light. I don't know. This. This. Yeah, write this. I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. The Usually at the end, it says who the writers are. Um, songwriters. Christine Bendebel. So it, it not wasn't her regime. song. Right. Uh, she obviously made it pop, though. Bloody hell. <laughs> Go on, let's keep going. Um, I just wanted to talk about the, the, the track and how, how well arranged it is. Because it, it, um, sometimes the tracks get, uh, the, the backing tracks get a bit busy. And don't allow the singers to um, shine sometimes for, with simplicity. And sometimes they drag the singer, not the singer drag the, their instrumental. Absolutely, but uh, with Lead, this, sorry, with drag. with them, I think is is a recurrent theme that theme that they always are sitting on top of the track. They are the ones that dictate what's about to happen, and I find that very interesting. That that shows two things: incredible vocal control. And a lot of uh, comfort, uh, comfy, like knowledge of the track. Like they're very well, in tune with, with what the, tr the track is like. You know, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me if they actually produced that track for them. They that you know the way they wanted. Yeah, for yeah. those performances. I mean, yeah. we know that when they did when uh, when Michael was also there and they sang that song in the studio, they were very the three involved, of them were producing involved. everything yeah. from zero. It it's genuinely a cover. 
Yeah. You know, from zero to our version of this song. So, yeah, yeah that's probably why those those things shine so much, you know. And I, and I think, it, yeah, it's true. Some, sometimes you get instrumentals that they sort of, yeah, they, they lead the performer or they drag the singer to do yeah. what, what's coming next. But with them, I think also it's because they're such a, they like to free free roam a bit sometimes. Yeah, definitely. With vocalization. So they need a track that allows them to do that. But they need to know the track inside out. Oh, and I feel, I feel like a lot of singers kind of fall in that. It, on, on getting complacent with the tracks and then they think they know the tracks and they are not really that comfortable when right. it comes to it and in, in their case it's never that's never the problem you know and i find that so fascinating it's incredible so <laughs> it's just so good <laughs> Oh man. I like when he goes a bit diphonic. I love that. Oh, listen to that unison. It's a one voice. I can never, I can never grasp that. Like that always blows my freaking head off. Like, I don't understand how they managed to do that. How? How? You don't even feel that there's two voices. It's... Yeah. Does Bugoy have a... Oh, I can't, you, I can't see his ears because I know Daryl has one out. Oh, well, I don't know. Because uh... sometimes when I watch some of these guys, they always keep their headphones on. I'm like, how? When you're doing stuff like that. But well, that... Maybe they're just trusting. They're just yeah, right. trusting you know what I mean? everything they hear. Yeah, right. Because you can, always, you can also feel it when you're singing and you have amplification in your in your ears you can, can always but... you can always feel it as well you feel resonant when you're supposed to feel resonant and that that's a very unmistakable guide for a singer that you can actually feel the vibrations in your chest right. um it really leads you on um so i understand why and if they're comfortable with their in-ear monitoring they they usually don't have the need to, to take them off but very rare though but do we very, watch, yeah do we watch uh, performers or singers i should say that do uh, um they sing the same lines Such so often for so view. long yeah so i that that's why it's normal i see you know daryl takes one ear out right but i want to see we always do it as well because i don't I, you know we don't know how the, the quality of their in ears at that moment or or, or their their their, their quality amplification their, in the, the headphone headphones, size yeah you know, it must be good but you know Ephra, i just i just i That's don't so think hard, people understand how hard it is to sing in unison and sound like that i don't think people understand like well, we've seen each, a lot of people miss yeah yeah because there is a, it, it, singing in unison is so delicate it's a very delicate thing because one breath out of place breaks a unison one s out of place breaks uh, the unison one simple run or coming off a line too early or too too late it just breaks the unison effect with them they're so it's like glues they're one voice and uh, they know each other inside out bro it's just ridiculous Very i don't impressive. understand how they do that like listen listen again listen again You it's can't! That's, that's two people! You see that? And they run exactly the same how. See, you can hear it there. <laughs> I just don't get it! I don't get it! Yeah! Anyone's comprehension, like it's so enjoyable to listen to, and they're so professional in their stuff. Chris Brownish, <laughs> I really like how he modulates very little in his mouth. 
It's all inside. That's nuts. How is that coming out of him? I don't get it. He barely moves his mouth. I know. They say película. I think so. That's two people singing at the same time. And there comes the harmony so effortlessly. It's magical! Oh, it's so good! It's ridiculous. Joke, <laughs> man. They're so comfortable with each other. That, Cause that Ooh, was special, brother. Dude. What? That was so Ooh. special. Bro. I just love the concentration and the atmosphere they created. It's just bloody insane. I'm speechless. It is. It leaves you totally speechless. It, it's one of those performances that you have to rewatch to re-understand and relive every emotion. I. I know that I fangirl over these guys all the time, but I just don't think people understand how how difficult it is to to reproduce something like that outside of a studio and and they not only reproduce it but they're able to captivate you with new emotion every single time they perform it regardless of the environment that is another level of professionalism that is another level of uh, talent and capability and understanding of of um Teamwork. I, I think that's very important to emphasize that um, you don't get a lot of singers that understand how to work together. And you can be fantastic on your own, but work with, working with somebody else, it's a whole science of its own. Yep. And, and these guys have found the right magic between the three of them. I mean, Michael is another genius. And... And sometimes taking one member out also it creates a total disbalance in, in the way that you sing. So you have to rearrange and readjust. Um, is uh, but it with them is just it's just mind blowing. It really is. I I uh, can never emphasize it enough. I think it comes from the hardest things to teach a singer or a musician is is feel, touch, and awareness. So yes. That only comes from experience. That's right. That, that's why they're the hardest things to teach because they come from, well, you know, in Spanish we call it roce with with the instrument. That yeah. means feel, or or you know, experience on stage, and awareness comes from being able to understand your environment under pressure, and also being exposed, gradual exposure to to that pressure and gradual exposure to uh, uh, singing in in rough environments, in tough environments, in easy environments, in uh, environments that enhance you, environments that uh, de uh, deplenish you. Yeah. You know, so it, that's that's why I feel they they they, and and I have a huge amount of ad admiration for them is because they have those three things down. Yeah. And I think it comes is from they were first singers live and then singers in studio. I you agree. You know, they were first out there singing a cappella with a guitar or a piano, or they were first or out there. in a karaoke bar. Yes, they were first out there in weddings and parties and then gigs and then more gigs and then more and more gigs and then more and more gigs on top of that and then more on top of that more gigs. And then you get into a studio. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I think it, they, that's my prediction, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, it seems to be the case. They're very impressive. And uh, I, I always, uh, I'm always really fascinating on how different techniques can be applied to different individuals and create such a unison sound because yeah. daryl's technique is completely different to what bugoy applies on his own 
way of singing. Michael is also very unique the way yeah, he sings too. Yeah, and and they have found the ways that work for them. Yeah, you know, like they might do things similar similarly, but they have found a, a a formula that works for them, and they know how to exploit it. Yeah, and it's it's fantastic. This this very is good. wonderful, wonderful. Awesome stuff.